Last month, the Supreme Court finally decided that employers, any employer, even religious organizations, cannot discriminate in hiring or firing against the LGBTQ plus communities. When Franklin Graham, son of evangelical icon Billy Graham, briefly pulled his head out of Donald Trump's ass and heard the news, he immediately took to posting on Facebook. I believe this decision erodes religious freedoms across this country. As we've seen in other cases, the religious believe that freedom includes the right to discriminate against people who do not share their beliefs. Or for whatever reason, really, so long as they can imagine some justification from their holy book, ecclesiastical pronouncements, or historical practice. Good to know. People of sincere faith who stand on God's word as their foundation for life should never be forced by the government to compromise their religious beliefs. For the record, the Supreme Court decision requires no one to compromise their beliefs, only their actions towards others. Indeed, the court is actually following that word of God thing by asking Christians to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Hashtag irony. Christian organizations should never be forced to hire people who do not align with their biblical beliefs and should not be prevented from terminating a person whose lifestyle and beliefs undermine the ministry's purpose and goals. I'm wondering, does this apply to every employee? And if so, how is compliance determined and enforced? Do these religious organizations check to see if their employees are fornicating, committing adultery, supportive of a woman's right to speak in church, against God's holy word? Do they check to make sure that their employees support the killing of non-virgin girls and women, homosexuals, Sabbath breakers, etc.? What do these religious organizations do to employees when they find out that they're wearing linen and wool together? For as long as I can remember, Christian doctrine has said that sin is sin. Any and all, however big or small, causing one to fall short of the glory of God and stand in need of God's grace. Christian doctrine also says that we are all sinners. So why are these folks hell-bent on ridding the world and their organizations of this one particular sinner? Curious, isn't it? The only question should be this. Can the person do the job? If they can, case closed. As a Bible-believing follower of Jesus Christ, my rights should be protected. Frankie, you have lost no rights. You can still believe and worship exactly as you please. The only right the Supreme Court has taken from you is your right to be a hypocritical homophobic ass. Stop whining and be grateful. When your new Messiah finds himself kicked or run out of office, this decision is actually going to help you recover some of the goodwill you've lost over these last four years at which point you'll be saying, thank go, Worsich. Even if my sincerely held religious beliefs might be the minority, I still have a right to hold them. The same holds true for a Christian organization. These are the freedoms our nation was founded on. Once again, Frankie keeps talking about his beliefs, which he can continue to hold, however bigoted and or hateful. You hate all you want, Frankie. It suits you. But if you want to act on your beliefs in a way which discriminates against others, that's exactly what this nation was founded to prevent, however poorly we've done that in the past. Remember that line in our Declaration of Independence, the one we've never really lived up to about equality? Well, we're getting closer and closer to that ideal now. I know that makes you uncomfortable, but you're free to join us at any time. We'll keep a spot open for you right next to Dan Savage and his husband. The Supreme Court does not override and will never overturn the word of God. Actually, that's exactly what our Constitution guarantees. Freedom from yours or any other religion which would require others to act according to your beliefs. Your religion tells you to kill homosexuals and non-virgin girls. Our Constitution and American law says you can't do that. Note here that it's not your God's holy word which guarantees the safety of the LGBTQ plus communities or sexually active women. It's our civil laws, which now also protect people from the kind of discrimination you seem to genuinely love and embrace. One day we will all have to stand before God, the righteous judge, whose decisions are not based on politics or the whims of culture. His laws are true and are the same yet 
yesterday, today, and forever. Right, which is exactly why the ideals of the Enlightenment were preferred when creating this country. Any organization stuck 3,000 years in the past without the ability to grow and adapt to the new information we discover about society and ourselves is dangerous as f especially in the hands of someone like you, Frankie. If you prefer countries in which the religious beliefs of the majority are imposed on everyone without such secular protections, I will personally start a fund to help you and all of your people migrate to Iran, Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, or any other theocracy on the planet. I'll even personally throw you a giant going away party. You wouldn't believe how many people in this country would be happy to see you off. Far more people than have actually seen you get off. You tight assed, hate filled, son of a tight assed, hate filled mother. Thanks for watching. Hey gang, thanks again for watching. As many of you know, YouTube creators like me who spend a lot of their time making these videos often have side hustles. I have three. I write, shoot, and edit cinema quality videos for others, I rent out my equipment, and I do a little driving for Zoom, which gets mentally, physically, and behaviorally challenged kids to and from school. Guess which one of those things hasn't happened since March? Correct, all three. Now, I know some of you have been hit much harder than I have by this whole pandemic mess. But if you like these videos, would like to see them continue, and have the means to do so, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Mr. Deity. As many of you know, it is far more blessed to give than receive. I'm told. So again, if you can afford to aim that giving right here, and to everyone who's already helped out in whatever way, you know what I'm going to say. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll see you real soon.